What's up guys, today we're going over how to not get your guard passed, starting with early when you can establish grips and progressing to late when your opponent moves your legs out of the way and you need to get your guard back. I show everything in gi and no gi and include a ton of rolling footage so you can see the techniques on a resisting opponent. In your guard, you want to have 4 points of contact, each limb. See how I have grips with both my hands and feet? This puts me in a good position to control Nikki, making it hard for her to move and pass. In this collar and sleeve guard, you can see I'm breaking posture with my hands and pushing away slightly with my feet grips to maintain tension and control. If you don't have any grips or points of contact, your legs can be moved out of the way very easily, resulting in your guard being passed. In this role with this brand new white belt, it's not like I have any magic black belt skills that make it so easy to pass, it's this lack of grips that's the problem and a great example of the importance of them. I recommend starting on your butt when in your guard because you can easily take grips and sit back to play guard from your back. Alternatively, you could also play sit up guard. In this role, you can see I go from my back to my butt to take a lapel grip. Now that I have what I need, I return to my back to play guard. You have to fight for dominant grips. This is something I stress constantly on the channel. With dominant grips, you can much more easily sweep and submit people and they're less likely to pass your guard. In this role, you can see I actually lose the grip battle. I'm fighting to take grips but cannot establish any meaningful with my hands and I put on my back. I do end up in butterfly guard but could have got some offense going quicker if I won the grip battle. This was a pretty awesome roll with a beast brown belt. I highly recommend you check out my rolling commentaries. The problem with starting on your back is that it's hard to take grips and remember without grips you lack control of your partner. If your opponent takes grips on you, you must take grips on them. Spider guard is a great example of four points of contact. If I only grabbed the sleeves and did nothing with my feet, Nikki would easily pass my guard. The same goes if I did nothing with my hands and only put my feet in the biceps. Now I break Nikki's grips while maintaining four points of contact to hit the sweep and control Nikki's legs as I finish. One cool trick when you're on your back is to cover your pants so it takes your opponent additional time to grip, making it easier to take your own grips. The same things needed for side control are the same things you need to prevent to stop your guard from being passed. You can never let someone grab your head. This is rule number one. You also don't want to let people get underhooks or put you flat on your back. If I allow these things to happen in my guard, it's going to be very difficult to get any offense going and I risk getting passed. Look what happens when I get on my side to prevent the underhook and track Nikki's far arm and prevent it from grabbing my head. It is so much easier to keep Nikki's weight off me and prevent the pass. Now I can get my own offense going like taking my own underhooks. Being on your back is fine as long as you prevent the underhook and head control. Look how I'm tracking my opponent's far arm to prevent him from grabbing my head. My elbows are close to my body which also prevents the underhook. I call these T-Rex arms. Now look what happens as I come up from the sweep. What do I immediately do? I grab his head. This is what led to the pass. My opponent should have used his T-Rex arms. Tracking the far arm is more than just defense, it's great offense. I snatch up the Kimura grip and use it to sweep my opponent and take the back with the Kimura trap. Let me know if you'd like to see a Kimura trap instructional. My opponent should have kept their elbows closer to their body. This is how I get my underhook. This is why I'm able to pass. I lift up on their arm to get them flat on their back. He does do a great job of establishing his T-Rex arms though, which prevents me from getting a solid side control. Taking the underhook from your guard will prevent them from taking an underhook on you, and now you can use it to sweep or take the back. Underhooks are super important for bottom and top position as well as standing to get and prevent takedowns. Being on your side allows you to utilize your frames like your knee shield. Frames prevent your opponent from being able to put their weight on you because they're fighting against the strength of your bones instead of your muscles. Now let's look at late when your opponent gets past your legs. If you let them grab your head or an underhook, it's hard to escape, but with preventative measures like T-Rex arms, you can work towards getting your guard back. The same concepts apply throughout Jiu Jitsu. You need to stay on your side. This will prevent them from putting their weight on you and give you room to get your bottom knee or leg in between you and your opponent to regard. The stiff arm is another great example of using frames to keep your opponent's weight off of you. It's really annoying when people do this because it works really good. With the grip on the sleeve, I straighten my arm and shrimp back to make space and back into my guard. If they put their weight on you, it actually works in your favor because you can do the sweet hip throw style reversal. This is one of my favorite techniques to hit because it works so good and looks super cool. Style points matter in Jiu Jitsu. This clip was more similar to a Heisman. The Heisman you push off the tricep instead of the sleeve. They're practically the same but you can utilize the Heisman in both Gi and no Gi because it is independent on a sleeve grip. It's also a great way to reestablish guard off a failed triangle. When our opponent clears a leg, we can pummel our other leg in to reestablish a connection and square up our hips to regard. Watch my opponent do this to me. I perform a leg drag but he pummels his leg in to stop me in my tracks. Beautifully done. Here 
Here's another example from a role I did with Jeff Chan from MMA Shredded. You need to be ready to catch your opponent's legs with your hooks. This is especially fun to do last second when your opponent thinks they're going to pass. This role I go for it as a last second effort but I miss the leg. My opponent has my head which as you remember is very bad for me so I just do everything I can to get my bottom knee in and reestablish a half guard. I call these mini inversions. They're just a way of getting your hips back in front as your opponent tries to make an angle. They're mini because you don't go completely on your shoulders. You just rock back to make space for your hips. A real inversion, you go completely on your shoulders and it's a great way to retain guard. Because it can be hard on your neck, I recommend only inverting briefly and going right back to your guard. I also recommend always showering before class. If I didn't, Nikki probably wouldn't be smiling right now. A useful and fun drill you can do with a friend or training partner is to drill guard retention without the use of your hands. This will force you to use all your late skills. Let's look at turning into your partner now. Taking an underhook will allow you to turn onto your side and onto your knees. If your partner doesn't overhook, you can take their back. If they do overhook, you have the dogfight available, but that's a topic for another video. Notice how I stopped Nikki's arm from grabbing my head? I can't emphasize that enough. You can never let someone grab your head. Grabbing the legs to wrestle is another great option. I consider any Thing which involves grabbing the legs and getting to your knees, wrestling. Sometimes I'll even let people get past my legs just so I can wrestle them, especially in Noki when it gets sweaty and hard to take grips. Jeff gets past my legs and if I were to do nothing about it, he could settle into north-south or side control. Instead I come up for the knee tap. The priority should be keeping the leg as close to your chest as possible so your opponent can't sprawl. This is why I was able to counter this attempt. The biggest favor you can do for me is to like and comment on my videos. It does two things, it makes me happy and also blesses me in the YouTube algorithm. So we can turn inwards, but we can also turn outwards into turtle. The problem with going to turtle is you can get your back taken, but I feel pretty comfortable turtling plus I like turtles. The problem is mitigated by staying tight and preventing inside control. Inside control meaning your partner getting their arms between your shoulder and neck or armpit and hip. We also need to be mindful of our inner thigh, but the over under and body lock are the most common grips and what we want to avoid. If our opponent can take these grips, they can take our back and do other bad things to us. Like this clock choke, I'm able to do this because I have inside position with both hands. You gotta fight off inside position, you gotta make sure there's no holes in the armor. Then you can escape because your opponent doesn't have control of you. Look how I keep my elbow tight so Nikki can't force her hand through. If they do get their hand through, you need to grip fight to get it off you. Now let's look at some escapes. The first one, which is my go-to, is the sit-out. We lift our near side leg up and shoot our far side leg through and back into our guard. Look again, knee comes up and leg shoots through. So dreamy. In this role, look how I have control of my opponent's grip. This prevents his attack and allows me to sit through and escape. If your opponent has a deep grip around your waist, you can actually use it against them by trapping their arm above the elbow and rolling them over. I like to go back towards the legs in this scenario, almost like finishing a double leg takedown. You can also finish with an arm lock. The most important thing is that you're above the elbow. If you're below, it's not going to work. The Granby roll is another great way to regard using an inversion. You want to roll over your shoulder and square up your hips either into your guard or submission like a triangle. If you do fail on a submission, you want to abort mission on your own terms and transition quickly into the next attack or position. Alright guys, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you did, please let me know what tip or what technique resonated with you the most or simply leave a fist bump.